Hi, my name is David Simpson. Uh, I'm one of the DB2 instructors and course developers here at Themis. I have with me today Linda Clausen, uh, who also teaches and, and writes DB2 course material. And uh, she's been our lead uh, at Themis on version 10 uh, of DB2 and how that's going and what features we can expect. And uh, she's done a lot of work lately in the migration process. In fact, you presented at IDUG on uh, migration survival, right? Version 8 right. to 10, 9 to 10, uh, migration survival. So I guess we could start, when we first start talking about version 10, before we can use the features, we got to get there. That's right? right. And so how do we survive that migration? What do you think is probably one of the biggest things people need to look out for when they're going to 10? I think migrating into version 10, one of the biggest issues is going to be the DB2 catalog and directory restructuring from the mm. system side. Yeah. It's a total restructuring. All of the links and hashes have been taken away. Uh, it's all referential integrity. They're all separated out into their own private universal table spaces. So the catalog is more like databases we develop the for our own application. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And it's RI, referential integrity. Right. And not only that, there's a significant amount of large object mm -hmm. columns in the catalog and in the directory. Yeah. So uh, how you back those up and how you recover them is going to be quite different. And how you reorg them and, and you know, all the yeah. all, yeah. so so we have to be uh, for those of us who work on the system side, then we have to be large object experts now. Correct. Where we might say our shop didn't have any large objects in it you prior. Do now. Uh, you, you do, do. right? You do. <laughs> so the catalog restructure is obviously uh, huge. Um, we we also can talk a little bit about you know whether we go from 8 to 10 or 9 to 10? Skip yeah. migration is, uh, I'm hearing a lot of interest in the skip migration. Right. Uh, some of the customers out there that I've talked to, the cost of going from 8 to 9, 9 to 10, in just pure man hours mm -hmm. and work hours, right. if they can do the skip, they're seriously considering this. Especially now, with all the phases you got to go through in each of these migrations. That's right. right. But, and the number of subsystems they're going to have to migrate. Right. So uh, they're really seriously looking at skip migration. Now, when they're doing that, they're going to have to do more planning. Yeah. And it's very, very critical to run that pre-migration job and find out the things that will stop you from migrating right. up front. So obviously, we have to weigh the cost of the extra person hours that it would take to go through both releases against the risk that you take on by biting off a, a bigger chunk by going 8 to 10. Correct. So Correct. you're going to take on all the change that came in nine plus all the mm -hmm. change that comes in ten, uh, in in one in one bite. That, that's so it'll be interesting to see as customers start to do that. You know how that goes. Right? Yes, and we've already got one of our clients planning for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're they they had a very good solid version eight subsystem. Right. And I think they're going to succeed quite well. Right. Planning is everything, though, right? Planning is everything. Don't want to do Planning that um, uh, half-heartedly. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so let's maybe talk too about uh, once we get to ten. Favorite features? Oh, I love the schema enhancements. Mm. I love the fact that I can alter these table spaces, change my table space type. It's pending changes, and when I run my reorg, the changes. Are applied right, so with. deferred change even, right? Yep, and yeah. not only that, I don't lose, have to drop and lose all my grants right. and everything else. So uh, that makes it so much easier, my life easier as a DBA. What about right. you, your so, favorite? So one of the things I've been working with a lot in the last couple of weeks anyway is the temporal data oh, yeah. that comes in, in 10. Um, and it's really doing, it's DB2 doing things behind the scenes that we've always done with code in the past. So temporal data is just the ability for DB2 to understand the business time frame of a row or the system time frame of a row. The system time being when was the row on the table, when was it changed, when was mm -hmm. it deleted. Business time being, uh, and, and I used to work in a very large insurance environment where, where business time was everything, right? You know, when was the coverage effective, when did it terminate, which may have be at different times than the row was actually added to the table. Um, and so we track that, that very heavily. So now you can put some of that stuff under the control of DB2 and you can get DB2 to actually, with a unique index now, make sure that two rows don't overlap, even if the dates aren't the same, you know, that they don't yeah. have overlapping um, uh, time ranges. 
so I've been working a lot with that and, and seeing how we can use the from clause extensions in the select to say, show me the row as it looked three weeks ago or whenever you want. Um, so that's one of my favorites. And, and one of, that's, that's one of the biggest features in version 10, I think, that has a direct bearing on applications, how we might develop applications. I understand too that you can set the those temporal tables up to uh, automatically record history. Is that correct? Right. Well, that's the system time frame, mm -hmm. right? So, so when you when you have it track system time, <clears throat> then you're going to actually create a history table where when the row changes, it's automatically keeping an audit trail and throwing the the previous versions of the row in that history table. Uh, which is again, we've done that in the past with application code or triggers or or some kind of mechanism to scrape the log and populate our history. Now we can put it under the control of DB2 and you know it's getting done. And that gets rid of those ugly triggers and those yeah. are always a pain to keep up with yeah. everything else. And another thing, like you said, when you change the schema, you got to remember to make sure and get those triggers back uh, and in working order to get your history, to keep your history up to date. Correct. So I think that's a, that's a big feature for applications uh, that might change the way we develop applications and, and keep track of, of and actually, it crosses over into the DBA area because if they can get rid of those triggers, they just as soon get rid of them. That's right. And do it That's with right. history tables that are automatically populated for them. Right. Um, so another thing in version 10 that, that uh, a lot of people are going to like, I think, is kind of the out-of-the-box performance improvements yeah. that you're going to get without having to do a whole lot. So in a lot of releases, DB, IBM will tell us, well, you can get you know, a X amount percentage of performance improvement if you go to your code and make these changes. Mm -hmm. With version 10, it's a lot of it's out of the box, right? It's I just right out of the and, and I'm picking it up. In fact, I've seen some 10 to 5 to 10 percent rebind just by doing a rebind of my native SQL procedures and right. some of the other things, <clears throat> uh, improvements right out of the box in conversion mode and uh, in new function mode even a little more. Right. So, so, so we got a lot of uh, a lot of neat stuff coming in in ten. We've got a lot of migration considerations. Uh, you know, and Linda's been the lead developer on our course material that's uh, that deals with getting to version ten from either eight or nine, mm -hmm. and what are the things that uh, we got to overcome at both of those. Particularly going eight to ten, we got to go back and look at what were the the problem areas in version nine because we're getting those as well as whatever comes in version ten. So. So we're working on course material um, uh, that, uh, that addresses both yep. of those, those issues. And we have hands-on migrations. Yeah. <clears throat> so you did a, a, uh, mm -hmm. an installation class recently where the students actually put up a version 9 system and migrated it to version 10. Correct. The hands-on. And that's a great experience to have before you actually order the tape back home. Yeah, that that, you, that way they can go it. through all the checklists that I've been through at once. Yeah. Now all I have to do is worry about my own environment specific problems. I don't have to worry about getting, you know, they've been through the job streams. Right. Install and then a migrate. Kind of know where the pitfalls on. are, where the jobs are that you got to customize the most and, and work on in your shop. So I uh, had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fun stuff. Is is being able to prepare for that and being and being thoroughly prepared for doing it uh, in your own shop. So uh, thanks for joining us for this uh, for this session, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in a class soon.